Today we learn two simple ways to add a muzzle flash to guns with Unity. The first way to do is that when you shoot the bullet, just change the bullet sprite to the flash sprite for a few frames and then change it back to the original sprite. And the second way is to keep a muzzle flash sprite in a disabled game object inside the gun and just enable it for a few frames when the gun shoots. Let's start Unity and set up our test project. So I have this blank project with me with just some sample sprites in it. The first thing we do is to create a game object called gun and attach our gun sprite to it. We also need a place where bullet will start from. So I'll create a game object called muzzle as a child of gun and position it properly. Now we also need a bullet game object with my bullet sprite on it. And I'll just create a prefab out of this to reuse and delete the original one. Let's now create a gun script on the gun object and the first thing that we need is a reference to the bullet prefab and in my update I can check if I hit the fire button I'll call some method called shoot. I'll define that method below and in this method I just instantiate the bullet at the muzzle position. That means I need the reference to this position so let's create a public reference for that uh, variable called muzzle transform. Now we set the position of the bullet to the muzzle transform position and set the rotation to identity. But there should also be some kind of cooldown for the bullets. So let's create a float called cooldown with some default values. And I'll also create some variable to keep track of the current shooting time. Let's call it next fire time. Now, instead of checking just the input, I also check for the cooldown. Let's now move on to create the bullet script, which will help us move the bullet in the forward direction. So every bullet needs some speed. So define a variable for that. Then in the update method, we just move the bullet ahead by this speed and some time delta. One more important thing is to make sure that the bullet is destroyed after some time. Otherwise, we will end up with a lot of junk game objects. So let's define a destroy time variable. And in the start, we will call the game object destroy method with that delay. Our test project is complete now. So we can start implementing our muzzle flash. So as mentioned earlier, the first approach was to change the bullet sprite for a few frames. So let's do that in the bullet script. Let's create a variable for the flash sprite that will be used for the first few frames and we'll call it flash sprite. We also create an int variable for the counter of how many frames we want to flash. Then when the object is created, right in the start method, we'll start a coroutine called do flash and define this method below. The first thing here is to get the sprite renderer component and also cache a copy of the original sprite of the bullet. Then set the sprite to our flash sprite we then wait for a few frames and reset the sprite back to the original sprite. Now to wait, we can keep a counter called frames flashed and run a while loop to check if the frames flashed is less than the frames to flash. We continue the loop and just keep yielding. And also don't forget to increment the frames flashed inside the loop. Now in Unity, we can see that the bullet flashes for a few frames. Let's tweak the variable to get the perfect flash effect. And there we have the muzzle flash with the first approach. Now let's try the second method. Before we can start method two, we need to make our bullet script more robust so we can reuse it for both approaches. So in the start method, we will do a check to see if the flash sprite is not null. Only then we will start the coroutine. Otherwise we will just ignore it. You can see in the inspector, if I duplicate the prefab and remove the flash sprite, the bullet still works as expected without any error. So for the method two, we create one more child object inside the gun called flash and assign our flash sprite to it and disable it. Now, when we need the flash, we just enable it for a few frames and then disable it back again. Let's jump into gun script. Let's create a variable for muzzle flash game object and also for how many frames to flash. Next, in our shoot method, we start a coroutine called do flash again and define it below. The first thing we do is to enable our muzzle flash object, start a counter called frames flashed and run a while loop to check if the frames flashed is less than the frames to flash. We just yield a null value and finally disable the muzzle flash object again at the end. We should also only start the coroutine when it's not already flashing. So let's create a boolean for that. And in the coroutine, we set it to true at the start and false at the end. Also, just as a sanity check, we should make sure that the muzzle flash is always disabled at the start. Let's assign our flash object in the inspector and hit play. There's something wrong as the flash is not disabling. Let's check the code. Okay, so we forgot to increment the frames flashed in the coroutine. Now we can see that the muzzle flash works. Let's duplicate the gun and use both methods at the same time to compare them. 
We should also do a check in the gun to make sure we only enable the muzzle flash if it's not null, so the code is more robust. We can see that the both methods produce almost the same results, so it doesn't really matter which one you use, both are good enough, so choose whichever fits you the best. That is it, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.